Well, I was born in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. My dad was a Marine, so we were there. Um, but my mother is from DeLille, the past Christiana area. So when my parents got divorced at about four, I think I was. We moved back here, um, moved to Gulfport first, stayed there for a little while, and then ended up in Biloxi, where I went to elementary school and you know, kind of grew up here in Biloxi. Mm. My biggest influence early in life would be my uncle Mark, who introduced me to the 70s funk. Um, the Meters, and so George Porter Jr., the bass player for The Meters, has been the guy I want to be like forever, as far as bass playing. And then later in life, you know, more of the hippie bands like Widespread Panic, um, Dave Schools really was a big influence. Um, I played nothing like him, <laughs> but I always enjoyed his sound and what he did. Uh, but really the old school guys, you know, just listen to that old school funk and the more New Orleans style funk more than anything. I was never really much of a disco guy, which a lot of people consider funk, but um, that's really what's driven me. And then as far as art, just what local artists have done and the different places I've been, noticing that local artists really create something that is very unique, more so than anything else in a city. Well, Bluxy was home and, and it always treated me really well, from the people that I met growing up to the school system. So my teachers were very influential and very open and, and welcoming. You know, it's a young black fella, especially a light-skinned black fella in Southern Mississippi. You know, it's not the friendliest place in the world, but in Biloxi, I never felt, I never felt unwelcome. And as I traveled around the country even, nowhere ever felt as welcoming as here. And I felt like I owed it to the city to come back and, and give that back and make other people feel that way. So Lauren and I met through friends. My best friend is from Biloxi too. We met in the ninth grade. And when I moved down, I kind of moved in with him. <laughs> you know, through being around each other enough, we connected. And I think finally at a uh, Feed the Need event, we, we you know kind of got together and been together ever since. So Blackwater Brass was, has been a great ride. It started with me meeting Gary Cooper, who was the drummer, uh, or is the drummer for Blackwater Brass, and, and wanting to recreate something I'd done before. And in Southern Indiana, I had a band called The Funk, which was a big eight to 10 piece brass band from here from time to time. Sometimes it was six, sometimes it was 10. And it really um, connected. And so we have done some amazing things, like leading a marching group through New Orleans on Fat Tuesday. You know, people ask or talk about how many people they've played for. We've played for millions of people in a day, which is special. So the coast is this kind of unknown little place hidden away in Southern Mississippi. We're fighting that stigma of just being in Mississippi. But when you get here, there's great food. There is some interesting music. There's great art. There's this coastline that I don't think you would expect. Um, and the muddy water. I, I love the fact that we have this dirty water out there that's beautiful to ride by and look at and provides all this bountiful seafood for us to eat. There are more things to do than you can do here between the museums, the beach, which is just a big free place to go have fun. You can break out a kayak or a paddleboard and go out to Deer Island. You can just ride your bike along the beach. Um, go out and take your kids and throw the football. There's, go throw a cast net, go learn how to do that. That's a good time and endless hours of entertainment. Um, there's literally more than the population can support almost and, and you just need to get out and do it when you can. So I do uh, several things in the community. I, um, Probably I'm a little over leveraged in that way. i currently sit on four different boards. I do the outreach for the Maritime Museum, which is very important work to me because it's the history of not only Biloxi, but the coast. So we talk about seafood, we talk about the military, we talk about hurricanes, we talk about everything that's affected the coast and how it's grown. So uh, one message I'd like to get out to young local artists and people surrounded by art is that you can make that a living. And there are many ways to make that a living. You can, you can teach, you can just go outside and drive down Highway 90 and look at all those billboards. Somebody designed those. Every casino employs several local artists. So many things you can do with it. It's important that people understand that and that we are, as adults really are supporting it and giving kids that lifeline. Well, my musical journey through Mississippi will be about funk. And I say that word a lot, but 
introducing that to people and bringing it to a little bit of a bigger level. I mean, it's just the Gulf Coast and it's just Biloxi. Not a whole lot of people, but it is a whole lot of people to me. I mean, and they have really been warm and accepting of us doing a different thing. I think music and art are a great tool to transcend all the turmoil we're going through in the country right now. If it's a good groove, people are gonna to move to it. My name is Corey Christie, and this is my story in our Mississippi home.